Right here beside me, we have Creative's AE9 Sound Blaster flagship sound card. This one includes it all, and at this price, it better be impeccable. Because this is one of those things, if you're an audiophile, you want the absolute best. For the majority of people, this thing is just completely over-engineered. You don't need it if you're getting a sub $100 headphone, for example. You can just use your onboard audio. This thing is gonna be for someone who wants it all and even wants the 48 volt line-in condenser microphone support. So if you're a high quality streamer or you're just someone who loves audio, is this thing going to be for you? Today, we're gonna to be running it through the whole suite of tests here, testing every single thing out on this card, as well as the software, powering it from some ortho dynamics as well to see if it passes all the tests here at Tech yes Studio. And even then, I hope it cooks me breakfast at this price because if it doesn't, I'm going to be disappointed. Let's roll the review and get on with the deets. So getting straight into the details of the hardware inside this unit, we've got the DAC, the ESS9038. This features dual stage OP amps for the line out and also the headphone out lines with JRC2114D and any 5534AP amps. They're looking at what levels this thing supports, 384 kHz, 32 bit for the line out, 192 kHz, 24 bit in. You have to change it to direct mode to get the line out up to 32 bit. Otherwise, going through the sound core 3D processor, which there's two of them for both the stages, you then get up to support of 32 bit, 96 kilohertz. And that's essentially the sound processing, which can make things a lot more fun if you wanna go down that color option. The main AE9 sound card going into a 1X slot on your PCIe bus requires a PCI 6 pin power. So it's great to see that they've changed this from the dirty Molex connection that they used years ago, which is touted to give you clean recordings, but we'll test that a little bit later. For the caps, they're using Nichicon Goldfine caps on the sound card itself. And then in the ACM, they've also got a biamp stage. Well, this features Wema FKP2 capacitors. And then for the last bit of hardware for surround sound support, you've got the ESS9006 DAC, and it also supports Dolby Digital and DTS surround sound technologies. Starting out with the objective numbers, which is the most important thing with any piece of hardware like a sound card, because if the objective numbers are bad, then everything else can't be fixed really in the future. Software and stuff like that, that's easy to fix because you can get an update. But anyway, getting onto the numbers, we want these to be perfect and at least for the output stage, they are pretty much perfect. Looking at the frequency response curve, we can see pretty much a flat line going all the way through here for the frequencies that our human ears can hear. Though there is a very slight drop off from zero to 10 Hertz. I measured it at 0.05 decibels. Again, it's absolutely nothing, but these are some of the best numbers I have seen for the output stage coming through here at the studio. So there will be pretty much no bass roll off. You'll get that full sub bass experience coming through on whatever headphones you use with this unit. Uh, though looking at the cross talk, that's pretty good as well. So we're coming in at minus 91 to minus 92 dB. That means you won't notice any sound leaking from the left channel to the right channel and vice versa. Though at least with the last 0.5 decibels on the volume level, so when we turn this unit up to max volume, we essentially had uh, 10 decibels leaking into the other channel on crosstalk. So essentially, if you're gonna use this unit, just keep it one little notch above its max volume level or below for best operation. So the hardware on this unit is checking out really well. There's also a direct mode where you can flick your headphones into this mode and get up to 384 kilohertz, 32 bit output support. And this is if you want just a completely flat signal, which is what we measured our frequency response curve numbers in before. Uh, on top of that, the channel balance between left and right channels is pretty much perfect as well. So they've hit the nail on the head when it comes to the output numbers. Though on top of that, the software suite allows you to do things like a 10 band EQ, and it's also got preset profiles. It's easy to save your new profiles as well. And of course, with EQing, it all depends on how well your headphones EQ. The auto dynamics I have here, they EQ pretty well. Same with my Fidelio L2s and L1s. These are two of my favorite headphones, the Fidelio L series, and they EQ pretty well on this unit. Though let's move over now to some games tests where we can test out the Sound Blaster Studio, the SBX, which is a feature on the control module, which you can turn off just with the button, turn it on, or you can control it in the software to adapt it for the particular game you're playing. 
and give you a different experience, which I think is hit or miss, but I'll let you guys have a little listen. Silence running. Shush. Silently. A whisper. Jimmy. Five seconds. Ring ain't far. So let us know in the comments section below what you guys think of the output demonstrations here. Do you think SBX is working well? Do you think it's not working well? It depended on the game. Like I really liked it in Apex Legends and CSGO, but I thought in Dota 2 having it off was better. That was just my opinion. But as it checks out so far, the output stage both in software and hardware is working really well. But let's move over now to the input stage, which on this unit and at its price point, I'm going to say is equally as important. You want that to be as good as the output stage if you're spending this kind of money. We're going to take a look at the microphone inputs on the A9. And now these run through the command unit itself and then that runs to the sound card. And you can see they've got a 48 volt power button on the A9's command unit, and then that'll power a condenser microphone like I'm using here. This is the Beringer B1, and the volume level set to around 80, and we've got a zero dB boost. We've also turned off noise suppression, and there's no voice morph, and we'll get onto the voice morph soon, because I want to let you guys have a listen to see if there's any noise coming in. So there might be some subtle background uh, noises like fans going on in my main computer, but if you hear a sss, that's a hiss sound, that's not that good. So I'm going to listen to this in post, and we're also going to change over now to a lavalier microphone and see what the results are. So now we're on a lavalier microphone. This is the one that I use in my normal vlog recordings for you guys when I'm doing parts hunts and stuff like that. And we've had to set the noise to... I mean the mic boost, sorry, to plus 10 dB with a volume level of 50. And you guys can just have a listen, see if there's some noise coming in. And now I'm quickly gonna analyze both these and get back to you guys and let you know the results. All right, testing out noise reduction. Let's test out noise reduction. One, two, three, one, two, three. 
Now we're going through the voice morph technology as well. If you're a streamer and you want to have a bit of fun with your viewers, or if you just want to have a bit of fun in Dota 2 on your team chat or whatever, you can do this with that. Again, as we mentioned in the intro, that sound core 3D processor. Right now, I am a robot and I'm going and to change over now. now to a chipmunk. So now I'm a chipmunk. Now I'm a marine and we'll go through some of the others here. You can have a listen. I'm an orc, apparently, and I'm now a brute. And an infiltrator. Or a demon. That's a bit of a weird one. And a dwarf. Huh. Hey, laddie. I'm a dwarf. Look at me. I'm an elf now. Wee, I'm an elf. Oh, wait, that's a leprechaun. <laughs> now I'm an emo. And if they've got, they need to introduce uh, emo leprechaun. That would be pretty cool. Unstable. Uh, that, isn't that the same as emo? Oh, pretty much. Uh, anyway, from up north, uh, if that's, that must be a USA thing or something, because I want to be from Texas, from the southern... Hey, deep voice. We got deep voice. Elderly. If Elder Pa was out there, he would like this one. Female, I can change into a Sheila. And a kid, I can be a little kid if I want to. Or a male. And if um, I want to be neutral, I can be neutral. Or I can just simply turn it off. After all that, here we are at conclusion time with the Creative A9 Sound Blaster. And you guys could probably tell during this review, I was a little bit frustrated. And we're going to get that point out of the way because this was so close to getting a good recommendation from me. And although it's an expensive product, and like I said in the intro, it needed to be impeccable. And that means there's no problems with it. And on the output, it was pretty good. And basically the problem with this product lies on that line in and mic in port where with a condenser it sounded fine like I really had to listen hard to hear any noise but even then it should have had basically no noise whatsoever with the 48 volt power. So if you wanted to use this for streaming and you wanted to use the 48 volt with a condenser you're probably going to be okay but probably going to be okay is not good enough for this price range and then we looked at plugging a lavalier microphone into it and there was noise coming out of this and then I cross-referenced that with a V-Motor Boom Pro which is a typical headset mic and that was bringing in noise as well and it was noticeable noise and as we saw with that example we ideally don't want to use noise suppression because it really lowers the quality of the voice work coming into that line in port and so basically you're left at a stage now where the line in is good enough I guess it's like 48 volt power that you would expect from a pretty budget uh, preamp and then you've got an output stage that's phenomenal and it's really good for listening it powers ortho dynamics you've got the option to change the OP amps the software the EQs the surround the DTS features and the feature set of the unit itself having RCA out RCA in optical in optical out surround sound support, and the fact that you can use that and get augmented benefits to other gear in your stack as well, made this just really good on the output stage, but then frustrated me on the line in stage. And coming out of this, I'm just a little bit frustrated as to why Creative didn't just go the extra mile on that line in side of things and the mic inside, because that's pretty much the whole selling point of the A9 is that it's got the phenomenal output but it's also got the phenomenal input and it just doesn't have the phenomenal input and that's my problem and everything else is just so good and I'm just going to sit here and say I'm frustrated because if it did have that line in and it was really strong and it did have no noise even when you plugged in a headset mic I would have been here giving it a recommendation but I can't because that's pretty much everything had to go together in order for me to recommend this product and it just missed the mark on that line in. They could have put some better componentry on that line inside and really strengthened it up and really just made it a clean as signal and I would have been here recommending it to people. And the whole thing with the Sound Blaster A9 is that you've got that convenience of having the input and output all in one package and you've got that control module. And there's so much flexibility with the SBX button, the volume knob being really good, quarter inch, 3.5 mil in, XLR in, 3.5 mil mic in. And then you've also got on top of that, the high and neutral and low sensitivity options. But then they just missed the mark on the core components on the line in. And as you heard in the examples there, the condenser sounds really good, 
but it's still got a little bit of noise. And so if you're a professional streamer and you wanted to pick this up and have a phenomenal solution on your desktop, you'll have on the output stage phenomenal. And then on the input stage, you'll have just good enough. And that's with a 48 volt condenser microphones. And so this leaves me at the recommendation of, unfortunately for creative, no. And that's because that line import and it all comes down to everything checking out and it just didn't. And this is the thing, right? You've got the condenser there, 48 volt, and then that works fine. But if you get a dynamic on there, which a lot of streamers and a lot of people doing professional recordings use dynamic microphones, you're then going to get noise and you're gonna to have to combat that with eliminating that noise either via post or putting on noise suppression, which as I said before, nerfs your voice quality. But basically coming out of this video, that's my recommendation. And that's again, for the 350 US dollar price tag, I wanted it to be impeccable on both the input and the output phases. And although it did hit the output, I feel like it didn't hit the input 100%, which is what I wanted it to do. Though that aside, if you have seen everything in this video and you want the features this offers and you have a 48 volt condenser and you don't mind the noise, and you can utilize it, then it's your money. You can do what you want with it. But also on that note, let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this review, be sure to hit that like button for us. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.